Game of Thrones has become one of the most popular fantasy series of the past decade. It has cultivated a massive fandom, of which I am a devoted member. Within this fandom, there is a tendency to fall into factions, based on whether you think the show or the books captured the story of A Song of Ice and Fire better. This divide is quite interesting to me, and I think that examining the source of it might be fruitful in an artistic sense. In this series, I intend to examine both the show and the books, using narrative theory to assess how they handle the most important characters and their arcs. To begin with, we'll start by taking a look at one of the most overlooked characters in the series, Sansa Stark. Sansa is often written off as a typical damsel in distress or as a completely helpless character, but I believe that this interpretation is quite flawed. I believe that this uncharitable interpretation is due mostly to how the show handles Sansa's character. To this end, I have chosen some of Sansa's most important anchor scenes to compare how the book handles them versus how the show handles them. To begin with, we'll take a look at Sansa in the immediate aftermath of Ned's death. First, the scene from the show's perspective. You look quite nice. Thank you, my lord. No! Your grace. No! I'm king now. No! Walk with me. I want to show you something. Do as you bid, child. And as soon as you've had your blood, I'll put a son in you. Mother says that shouldn't be long. No, please, no! This one's your father. This one here. Look at it and see what happens to traitors. He promised to be merciful. I was. I gave him a clean death. Look at him. Please, let me go home. I won't do any treason. I swear I'll Mother just... says I'm still to marry you, so you'll stay here and obey. Look at him! Well? How long do I have to look? As long as it pleases me. Do you want to see the rest? If it please your grace. That's your scepter, there. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna give you a present. After I raise my armies and kill your traitor brother, I'm going to give you his head as well. Or maybe he'll give me yours. While this scene does capture themes that were present in the same events in the book, it also cuts important details that would really add to the weight of Sansa's character, which I think is more important considering she's one of the main point of view characters of the story. If we listen to this clip from the Game of Thrones audiobook, we can clearly hear that there is much more detail and attention paid to Sansa's internal struggles and thoughts than there is in the show. From the high battlements of the gatehouse, the whole world spread out below them. Sansa could see the great sept of Baelor on Visenya's hill, where her father had died. At the other end of the Street of the Sisters stood the fire-blackened ruins of the Dragon Pit. To the west, the swollen red sun was half-hidden behind the Gate of the Gods. The Salt Sea was at her back, and to the south, was the fish market and the docks, and the swirling torrent of the Blackwater Rush. And to the north, she turned that way, and saw only the city, streets and alleys and hills and bottoms, and more streets and more alleys, and the stone of distant walls. Yet she knew that beyond them was open country, farms and fields and forests, and beyond that, north, and north, and north again, 
stood Winterfell. What are you looking at? Joffrey said. This is what I wanted you to see, right here. This small detail of Sansa having a momentary vision of Winterfell and being somewhere else other than the Red Keep and the torture that surrounds her is extremely important for her character. This really should have been left in, as it gives us Sansa's main goal at this point, and that is to return home. As one of the main point of view protagonists, leaving this out has seriously detrimental effects towards Sansa's character and her agency. This is a major reason why Sansa is perceived as being so passive. We never get a good sense of her goals, at least in the early seasons. The show basically just makes her goal to survive, and survival is a self-evident goal for everyone in Game of Thrones. It's not terribly interesting. This next scene doesn't just cut details, it changes details entirely, and this results in a loss of a moment of agency for Sansa, less depth for the Hound's character, and a complete change in the theme and meaning of this scene as it was originally conceived. This scene is Sansa and the Hound's meeting during the Battle of the Blackwater. First, we'll look at how the show handles it. Lady's starting to panic. What are you doing here? Not here for long. I'm going. Where? Some place that isn't burning. North might be. Could be. What about the king? He can die just fine on his own. I can take you with me. Take you to Winterfell. I'll keep you safe. Do you want to go home? I'll be safe here. Stannis won't hurt me. <laughs> Look at me. Stannis is a killer. The Lannisters are killers. Your father was a killer. Your brother is a killer. Your sons will be killers someday. The world is built by killers. So you better get used to looking at them. You won't hurt me. Hurt you. And now that same scene, but from the book. Why did you come here? You promised me a song, little bird. Have you forgotten? She didn't know what he meant. She couldn't sing for him now, here. With the sky is swirled with fire and men dying in their hundreds and their thousands. I can't, she said. Let me go, you're scaring me. Everything scares you. Look at me. Look at me. The blood masked the worst of his scars, but his eyes were white and wide and terrifying. The burnt corner of his mouth twitched and twitched again. Sansa could smell him, a stink of sweat and sour wine and stale vomit. And over it all, the reek of blood. 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 I could keep you safe, he rasped. They're all afraid of me. No one would hurt you again, or I'd kill them. He yanked her closer, and for a moment she thought he meant to kiss her. He was too strong to fight. She closed her eyes, wanting it to be over. But nothing happened. Still can't bear to look, can you? She heard him say. He gave her arm a hard wrench, pulling her around and shoving her down onto the bed. I'll have that song. Florian and Junkwall, you said. His dagger was out, poised at her throat. Sing, little bird, 
Sing for your little life. Her throat was dry and tight with fear, and every song she had ever known had fled from her mind. Please don't kill me, she wanted to scream. Please don't. She could feel him twisting the point, pushing it into her throat, and she almost closed her eyes again. But then she remembered. It was not the song of Florian and Jonquil, but it was a song. Her voice sounded small and thin and tremulous in her ears. Gentle mother, fount of mercy, save our sons from war, we pray. Stay the swords and stay the arrows, let them know a better day. Gentle mother, string of women, help our daughters through this fray. Soothe the wrath and tame the fury, teach us all a kind way. She had forgotten the other verses. When her voice trailed off, she feared he might kill her. But after a moment, the hound took the blade from her throat, never speaking. Some instinct made her lift her hand and cup his cheek with her fingers. The room was too dark for her to see him, but she could feel the stickiness of the blood and a wetness that was not blood. Little bird, he said once more, his voice raw and harsh as steel on stone. Then he rose from the bed. Sansa heard cloth ripping, followed by the softer sound of retreating footsteps. When she crawled out of bed, long moments later, she was alone. She found his cloak on the floor, twisted up tight, the white wall stained by blood and fire. The sky outside was darker by then, with only a few pale green ghosts dancing against the stars. A chill wind was blowing, banging the shutters. Sansa was cold. She shook out the torn cloak and huddled beneath it on the floor, shivering. When we compare these scenes, the first thing we notice is that the show has way less tension than in the books. In the show, the Hound just stands menacingly over Sansa, whereas in the book, he has an actual knife to her throat and telling her that he's going to kill her if she screams or if she doesn't sing him a song. The change to Sansa's reaction is also extremely problematic. She just says to him, you won't hurt me, and that's not convincing him of anything. That's not showing her agency. That's just her guessing at him being a decent man underneath his brutal exterior. Whereas in the book, Sansa is basically about to be either raped or killed by this drunken guy who's drunk on not only wine but battle. And the song that she sings him is the way that she keeps him from killing her. And it fits so well thematically. He calls her a little bird. And what do birds do? They sing. The choice of song is also incredibly important. The song he's telling her to sing is Florian and the Fool, which is presumably a comedy song. But she sings this religious hymn that is praying for mercy. And in that moment, Sansa cuts to the core of the Hound. She reaches down, finds the little boy that, that was burned in that fire all those years ago, and, and shows that this world is not just hardness and death and destruction. There is goodness and there is innocence to be found. This also begins both Sansa and the Hound's major arcs of the whole series. For the Hound, this is the beginning of his redemption. In this very scene, he takes the bloody, tattered white cloak of the king's guard and tears it off his shoulders and that symbolizes that he is not going to pretend to be this knight or this dog anymore he's going to go and make his own life and be his own master this is also an incredibly important beginning for sansa's arc this shows the beginning of her ability to not manipulate people, but to empathize with people, to understand what makes them tick. It's truly a beautiful scene, and it paints a picture of hope in the middle of all this death and destruction and burning and hellfire. The way the show treats this moment is exactly the opposite. The Hound says to her, the world is built by killers. And then he leaves without a second glance and she holds her doll down to discard it, symbolizing that she has to give up her innocence and childhood and face the real 
world. And this is just completely nonsense. The Hound says Ned Stark is a killer and that the world is built by killers. And yes, Ned Stark has to kill people, but there's a difference between Ned Stark and Joffrey, okay? There's a big, big difference. And making it seem like there isn't one is just disingenuous and wrong. Compare the two messages and they are night and day. The book says, even in this horrible, horrendous world, there can be found innocence, redemption, and beauty. Whereas the show says, life is shit, the world is built by murderers, everything is terrible, you better just accept it and suck it up and turn into a killer yourself because that's the only thing you can do. Going back to Sansa's character, this change in theme completely takes away from her overall arc as well. Because instead of it being an uplifting story of this girl overcoming the odds and being able to rise above, it's a tragic tale of her becoming basically a copy of Cersei. Changing this is also unconscionable because it robs Sansa of one of the only moments that she has to show her agency in the entire first half of her arc. She's been tortured and imprisoned for the entire length of her stay at King's Landing. In this moment, no one comes to her rescue. She has to reach inside herself and find a way to convince the Hound not to kill her. And she does. And it's all about her choice. If she had chosen to sing Florian and the Fool, the Hound may very well have killed her. But that song of mercy and love cut to the core of him, and choosing it was a very small but early indication of the beginning of Sansa's progress towards someone who can empathize with others and use that to her own political advantage. Not in a ruthless and manipulative way like Cersei, but in a loving and caring way, a way like Catelyn, perhaps. Having her just say to the Hound, you won't hurt me, removes all of this agency because it's just her guessing or is surmising that he's already decided not to kill her. Therefore, there is no choice on her part in this scene in the show. It's entirely put onto the Hound, removing her agency and making her even more of a passive character. Now, I understand changes need to be made when adapting a book to a show. Obviously, you can't film 37 hours of a book, but Sansa is one of the main protagonists in the books. The chapters have her name on them. The main protagonists need to have agency. If they don't, then their actions feel meaningless and their story carries way less weight than it would. To move on, if I were to fix these scenes, first of all, the point of view has to be focused entirely on Sansa and it needs to be from her point of view. Second of all, we need more details, more symbolic and internal details about Sansa's state of mind and we need to spend more time with her. For example, the scene where Joffrey has the guy's tongue cut out is completely unnecessary because we already know Joffrey's completely cruel. What we really want to see is Sansa and her reaction to her father just being murdered in front of her. Overall, I think that Sansa just got lost in the shuffle because when you first read the books, she's not a very standout character. She's not very flamboyant or cruel or anything like a Joffrey or a Cersei. But her story is completely worth telling, and the themes and meaning of it are very, very important to, to be told. Thank you all for listening, and have a wonderful day. Gentle mother.